So we'd like to be able to solve non-homogeneous types of recurrence relations. So we have a really nice result in this section that allows us to do that completely, to find all solutions to a non-homogeneous recurrence relation. And uh, here's the result. It says, if you have a particular solution, Pn, to a non-homogeneous recurrence relation, then every solution takes on the form Hn plus Pn. You get a sequence by adding two other sequences. So Hn plus Pn, what is Hn plus Pn? So Hn is going to be the solution to the associated homogeneous recurrence relation. So Hn is going to be the solution to the, to the homogeneous recurrence relation. Pn is going to be the particular solution to the non-homogeneous. That's important. So let's actually do an example where we, um, we find all solutions to a non-homogeneous recurrence relation. So first thing you should do, uh, step one, You want to solve uh, for Hn. What's Hn? It's the homogeneous, the associated homogeneous recurrence relation. So if I focus here, right, this is the homogeneous part. We're going to write this as what? Hn equals H sub n minus 1. And uh, a characteristic equation, I'm going to do CHEQ for short, characteristic equation. That's going to be degree 1. Degree is 1 because from n to n minus 1 is 1, right? So I'm going to put an r on the left side and an equals 1 on the right side. Why? Because the coefficient on the left side is 1 and the coefficient on the right side is 1 for the hn and the hn minus 1. So there is our equation, r equals 1. Hey, we don't have to do any factoring. We don't have to do any solving. We have our answer, right? That's our, our root. That root is of multiplicity 1 because it only shows up once. Let's keep that in mind. So... Um, the form of the solution for Hn. It's going to be what? Hn. Remember we did the homogeneous types. So when you have just a single root, multiplicity 1, you just have what? Alpha 1, your root times your root to the nth power. So a constant times a geometric term. All right, well, 1 to the n is just 1, so we can simplify this to hn equals alpha 1, right? So just a constant. Your solutions are going to be constants. Form your solutions. Now, we don't have any initial conditions. Not yet, anyway. Now, step 2. Solve for Pn. And this one's a little involved, I promise you. Don't dismay, but it is a little involved. So for the particular solution to the non-homogeneous dude, you have to focus on, just the for now, the non-homogeneous part, the Fn, the ending, the ending of the non-homogeneous part. The ending of the non-homogeneous recurrence relation is called the non-homogeneous part. 3n. All right, and then you have to come up with the form, form for Pn. All right, so let's look at this. So Fn, the non-homogeneous ending, is going to be what? It's a linear 3n times a what? You always have to have a geometric term on the end. So a geometric term is going to be 1 to the n, right? When you don't see one, when you don't see a geometric term, it's 1 to the n, right? 1 to the n is just 1. So, in my form for my particular solution, I have to have a linear term, right? So it's going to be E0 plus E1n. Then I have to have a geometric term on the end, 1 to the n power, and then I have to check my geometric base or my common ratio. 1 here, is that a root? Yeah, 1 is a root. So since it's a root of my characteristic equation, I'm going to have to put an n here. And what power do we take? 
we take the multiplicity of that root, so we're going to put a 1 there. So end the 1 has to be in front as well, something special. All right, so simplify this, you get your particular form. Form of your particular solution is going to be, let's distribute the n through, we're going to have what? e0 n plus e1 n squared. That's it. I can just drop the 1 to the n because the 1 to the n is non-consequential. Right, it's just 1. That's not good. There we go. So that's the form of our particular solution. Now we actually got to find E0 and E1. This is going to require a little bit of work. And we're going to find E0 and E1. This is something we haven't done yet. This is probably the most tedious part of this whole process. Finding E0 and E1. Let's see if we can do that. So, if this is a particular solution to the recurrence relation, it has to satisfy it, right? So, we should be able to plug in Pn for A, G, A, N. So I'm plugging in Pn here for An equals, and then in place of An minus 1, I'm going to put Pn minus 1. Then I have a plus 3n, right? Now, how about Pn? Pn. Well, I'm going to have what? E0 times n plus E1 times n squared. Right, that's what Pn is. Now Pn minus 1, I'm going to plug in n minus 1 in place of the n. So I'm going to have what? E0 times, instead of n, I'm going to put n minus 1, plus E1 times, instead of n minus, instead of n squared, I'm going to have n minus 1 squared. Okay, that takes care of Pn minus 1. Then i got to do plus 3n, right? Plus 3n on the n. So basically, I'm going to solve uh, for E0 and E1 here. Let's expand a little bit. We have what? E0n plus E1. Crap. n squared. Equals what? E0n minus E0. I distributed. Here I'm going to expand n minus 1, n minus 1 squared is what? n squared minus 2n plus 1, and then I have a plus 3n on the end. So I clean this up, e0n plus e1n squared equals e0n minus e0. I'm going to distribute through the e1. I'm going to have e1n squared minus 2e1n plus e1 plus 3n. And then simplify this. Let's get 0 on the left side. I can cancel e1 or Z, e0n with e0n, subtracting from both sides, e1n squared with e1n squared, right? Subtracting from both sides. All right, so now we've got a 0 on the left side. So that's going to be equal to minus E0 minus 2 E1n plus E1 plus 3n. Now notice I made my n terms in blue and my constants in green. So we're going to have in green, let's put the greens together, E1 minus E0. Those are the greens. And the blues, we can do plus 3 minus 2 E1. And then factor out an N out of the blues, right? 3 is positive, 
minus 2e1, n times n. So that's going to mean that e1 minus e0 has to be 0. e1 minus e0, that has to be equal to 0. And the blue, 3 minus 2e1, that has to be equal to 0. So the bottom equation, we can actually solve for e1, right? We can solve that for e1. We can get that 3 is equal to 2e1. Divide both sides by 2, you get 3 halves, right? 3 halves equals e1. You can plug that into the top equation and then figure out what e0 is. So you have, what, 3 halves minus e0 equals 0. That's going to give you that 3 halves equals e0 as well. So that gives you the e1 and the e0. They're both 3 halves. So if you take those and plug those back into your form, where was your form? Don't lose your form. There's your form. That should have been in like a yellow color probably. Plug those three halves in. That'll give your exact PM. So let's put that down here. It's not good, is it? So we had, I forgot, what was the form? E0, n plus E1, n squared. So it's going to be 3 halves, n plus 3 halves, n squared. So there's your exact particular solution. So now we want to write all solutions. So step three. Step three. Find all solutions. All solutions. Let's that. Write. I think I use the word right here. Yeah, my notes I wrote right. Write all solutions. So it's what? An equals Hn plus Pn. So an equals, hmm, where was hn? It's just alpha 1, right? It's just a constant. Easy peasy. Plus, particular solutions take the form 3 halves n plus 3 halves n squared. So those are what all solutions will look like. Now, we didn't have any initial conditions. What if we added an initial condition? This would be like uh, part B. So part A was to find all solutions, right? Find all solutions. So part B is find find the solution. to an equals an minus 1 plus 3n when a1, so we're given one initial condition, a1 is 2. So let's pretend a1 is 2. How can we find alpha 1 here? So we're going to find alpha 1, basically. Find this constant right here. Under that initial condition, we're going to write a sub 1 equals 2. I'm going to write alpha 1 plus 3 has. In place of my n, right, in place of my n, where, where am I? Here it is, n, right there. In place of my n here, n here, and here I'm putting a 1, so I'm putting a 3 halves times 1, 
plus three halves times blank squared plug in a one. Yeah, so we're just going back to the all the solutions and plugging in one for n. All right, so what does that give us? Well, clean it up, you get alpha one plus three halves plus three halves equals two. In other words, alpha one equals well, alpha one plus, here we go, six over two equals two. So alpha one is equal to alpha one plus three is equal to two. And that implies alpha one is negative one by subtracting three from both sides. So we plug alpha one equals negative one back into all the solutions. We have a n is negative one. a n equals negative 1 plus 3 halves n plus 3 halves n squared. Yep. So that's it. That is a full 9 yards from beginning to end. And finally, with an initial condition. So you have to use your initial conditions at the very end. At the very end. That's how it's done.